When it comes to the Xbox One being upgradable via hardware, not just software, Phil Spencer had this to say last week at a press conference in which the press was invited and there was an embargo that lifted today, March 1st. This is what he had to say. We see on the other platforms, whether it be mobile or PC, that you get a continuous innovation that you rarely see on console. Consoles lock the hardware and the software platforms together at the beginning of the generation. Then you ride the generation out for seven or so years while other ecosystems are getting better, faster, stronger and then you wait for the next big step function. When you look at the console space, I believe we will see more hardware innovation in the console space than we ever have seen. You'll actually see us come out with new hardware capability during a generation allowing the same games to run backward and forward compatible because we have a universal Windows application running on top of the universal Windows platform that allows us to focus more and more on hardware innovation without invalidating the games that run on that platform. We can effectively feel a little bit more like we see on PC, where I can still go back and run my old Doom and Quake games that I used to play years ago, but I can still see the best 4K games that come out, and my library is always with, with me. Hardware innovation continues while the software innovation is able to take advantage and I don't have to jump a generation and lose everything that I played on before. What does all that mean? Let me break it down for you. Basically, this is what he's saying. He's saying that we can update the Xbox One via its hardware, on a hardware point of view, update it, and allow you to still play your previous games. He uses the words not he uses the words within a generation which is very interesting he says that i believe we will see more hardware innovation in the console space than we've ever seen you'll actually see us come out with new hardware capability during a generation allowing the same games to run backward what does that mean that means that not necessarily just this generation is going to die sooner but this generation is going to expand will we get will we get an xbox 1.5 Sure, you can take it as that, but I take it more as there will be a new system that will come out, and this new system will be within the time space of the Xbox One's life cycle, meaning it will not be 10 years in the future, and then we'll get a new Xbox, and this Xbox will be able to play the Xbox One video games, but will also be able to play future games at higher resolutions because it will be more powerful than the Xbox One. And this will all happen by way of this Windows unification, the unification of Windows. Now, in terms of unifying, Phil Spencer has said that he is not trying to unify PC with consoles. This is why. He says that, oh, and this is pretty interesting, because a lot of people, he feels that a lot of people, in terms of his job, a lot of people take what he says and sometimes don't understand it to the best that they possibly could. So he's very careful and leery when it comes to the word unifying. This is what he says. He says... I look at the work with, we're doing on the platform as an enabler for us to become relevant in PC gaming. I wouldn't say our strategy is to unify because when I hear unify, I worry a bit that people will interpret my own teams included. Hey, we just want to say a game is a game and all games should run everywhere. There are games I was talking about earlier, like Ashes of the Singularity, a fast-paced RTS game, probably not the best controller game, and I want to make sure those games are great. What I want what I want to make sure is that gamers on our platforms, you feel like you have access to as many games as you can. And as a developer, you feel like you have the tools and service service to reach as many gamers as you can. He's not talking about unifying because when it comes to unifying, there are differences between the PC and the console. And this is also what he talks about in this article. Again, all of my articles will be in the description below. That way you can read along with me. But as I continue this conversation, he also says that I think you can kind of get into scenarios where the hardware specs kind of overlap, probably at the fundamental level, or the hardware capabilities overlap enough where the differentiation kind of blurs. But the console experience is dedicated gaming hardware. He says the console experience is a dedicated gaming hardware device that is very appliance-like, meaning instant on, ability to basically do one thing, which is play games very well. 
PC is a multi-purpose device. I love that people play games on their PC. You can see a ton of people playing games even on Windows 10 already, but it can also do Outlook and load Photoshop and browse the web. So there are some fundamental differences about the hardware between the two that I think will always mean there are differences between console and PC gaming. And I want to embrace those differences, not try to get rid of them. So he's not talking about unifying because at the end of the day, these two platforms are two different things. A console is meant to play games. A PC, on the other hand, is meant to do a number of things. So he's not talking about allowing the console or making the console do more than what it's what it's supposed to do, which is play games. That's why he says he's not unifying. But he also says that he wants the, the Xbox, he wants this brand as the Xbox brand to be the place in which people can play the most games that they possibly can and developers can reach as many gamers as they possibly can with the best service. So in terms of unifying, Unifying the PC and the console, that's not what he's trying to do. He's trying to reach the gamers on the PC and unify them with the console gamers. And when we talk about the hardware updates and hardware upgrades in terms of he mentions the mobile space and how there's a new phone every year. People get a new phone every year, every two years because of it being updated, because of it being hardware that is superior to what they had last year. We can also think about the unification of the idea of PC gaming, meaning you can have a powerful platform not just on the PC space, but on the console space. And the console would be different from the PC, again, because it's instantaneous. It doesn't require you to have um, a thousand updates, or it doesn't require you to do this, that, and a third. This is a system you turn on, you hook it up to your you hook it up to your to your TV, you turn it on, you put your disc and you play it. You don't have to go through the number of hurdles that you have to go through when it comes to PC because it is a console, but the idea of being at the same power, at the same level of a PC is what I think he's talking about. Now we talk about the unification of the games. A lot of games from the Xbox brand are going to PC. And this is again because he is not thinking about Xbox as just a console. He's thinking about Xbox as a gaming entity. Think about that. It is a gaming entity, meaning the idea is that when people play games on their PCs, he wants that to be considered Xbox. People are playing Xbox on their PC, though. That's the idea. Now, you may disagree with that idea, but in the, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, you're playing games regardless. It's just a name associated with it. And if you don't like that name, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, but that's where it comes from. So he sees a world in which the Xbox console will eventually be on the same level as the PC in terms of hardware, in terms of power, meaning that there will be iterations of the Xbox that come out, perhaps even peripherals that come out, that will give the console hardware boosts. He also mentions in an interview um, that Nintendo may be announcing something really cool. And I think that what this statement comes from is the fact that, and he also says that he knows nothing about it, but what this statement comes from is the fact that they are, may be announcing a new system and the idea of what the system is. The rumors point that this system is upgradable in the sense of you being able to attach different peripherals to the system to give it more power. And it's very interesting that within his conversation with all of the hardware upgrades and things that he's talking about that he mentions Nintendo. He also mentions Sony, but it's very interesting that he mentions Nintendo and says that they're doing something cool. So an Xbox that is upgrade upgradable or an Xbox system that is to come out that could be on the same level as PC and something that is ever changing like the PC environment. What does that mean for gaming? What does that mean for future generations to come? Because I don't think it's the idea of killing generations. I think that it would still be a new Xbox, but I think that it would be able to play the previous Xbox games. He even mentions the idea of this backwards compatible for the 360 on the Xbox One and how this isn't just a, oh, you can play your 360 games on the Xbox One. It's more so a unification of your systems and being able to play the games that you own on any device.
as long as it is an Xbox device. So this is extremely interesting and I think it's really, really interesting when you think about what this means for the competition. He also mentioned Steam and how Steam is in integral to gaming on Windows. It's integral to the Windows success. There's been a lot of information coming out, a lot of rumors pointing at Steam and Windows and Steam and Xbox doing something. He mentions that he wants the developers to be able to reach the most amount of gamers they possibly can. Could Steam be coming to the Xbox brand? Let's have this conversation in the comment section below. This is an in-depth, analytical conversation about the Xbox brand, about gaming. We're going to be sophisticated about gaming. And I mean, you can be fanboys and all that dumb stuff, but be sophisticated fanboys. I'm Venom Zumillion, thanking you for watching. Hit the like button if you like the video. Hit the subscribe button if you like the channel. Um, and uh, there's going to be more videos like this to come. Peace. Have a good one. Peace.